a scare for the president's family. His daughter-in-law, Vanessa Trump, was rushed to the hospital after opening a letter containing white powder. The letter was reportedly addressed to Vanessa's husband, Don Jr. 40-year-old Vanessa, a mother of five, called 911 and reportedly said she was coughing and nauseous. Two other people who were exposed to the letter were also hospitalized as a precautionary measure. Secret Service is investigating the incident along with the NYPD. The first results indicate the white powder was non-hazardous. None of the kids were home when the letter was opened at Vanessa's mother's apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Good evening. We're going to begin tonight with a security scare at the White House. The president and the Australian prime minister were inside when a driver rammed a minivan into a metal security barrier. Jeff Pegues is on the scene with more on this. Jeff. Jeff, this crash into the White House security perimeter down the street, it was intentional and it shattered the calm this afternoon, putting all of Washington on a tense alert. Everybody, we got to walk this way now. Tourists, including the woman who shot this video, were diverted after this white minivan slammed into a security barrier at the southwest entrance. Secret Service quickly arrested the female driver. The vehicle's windows were shattered, but officers didn't have to fire a shot. What did you say to me? Yeah, I'm sorry, I just couldn't hear you answer it. Listen, I have to send you all the way in the 30 sector. You're about the only late car I have left. I had a bomb threat, 401 North Wabash. A uh, male checked in this morning and said that he has a bomb inside of his room. 1820. Interesting morning for the press pool that is traveling with the president here in West Palm Beach. It's a small group of reporters that go with the president wherever he goes. And he was going to his golf course here, the Trump International Golf Course, for the first time since he's been here. We know that he wasn't golfing earlier this weekend because aides determined that it would be poor optics in light of the school shooting. But one of the drivers of the press vans, according to the pool reports that are sent to all the reporters, actually had a firearm in his bag that they found when they were doing a sweep, going through all the luggage and bags and equipment that the reporters have. And the driver said it was a personal firearm that he forgot to leave in his car, but he certainly was detained. We were told President Trump's relationship with water has been fluid. So maybe it's no wonder some viewers were mesmerized by the covered glass of water beside him during an interview with Piers Morgan. He's covered the top of his water glass with a paper coaster thing. That is proper paranoid. Does he think Piers is going to lace his drink? Piers, his own water unprotected, later described the president's designated water woman preparing for his arrival. And she comes back with the water, right, the presidential water, which has all been secured. It's Watergate. She then gets a glass like this, pours the presidential water in, and then she produces a presidential seal napkin and a presidential seal paper uh, lid. Cover, cover lid. The precautions reminded some of a passage from Fire and Fury, which says the president had a long time fear of being poisoned. One reason why he liked to eat at McDonald's. Nobody knew he was coming and the food was safely pre-made. At least you know what you're getting. I don't want to go into a restaurant and say, Mr. Trump would like a hamburger to go. Yeah. Now, I don't know what they're going to do to that hamburger. If they like me, I'm happy. Okay, so this March on Washington is happening March, March 24th. March 24th. Tell everyone what is happening exactly. We're going to march on Washington. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Speaking of which, we have some product oh, placement yeah. for you. Oh. What? We made shirts, you guys. What? Oh. So if you can't make it with us, you can wear it with us. All right. <laughs> well, you know, the main. The thing that inspired us to create the march was people saying, you are all talking about gun control, and this is not the time to talk about gun control. This is the time to grieve, the time to mourn. And we understand that. And we said, now might not be the time to talk about gun control. Here's the time to talk about gun control. March 24th, we are going to have so many people in Washington, D.C. So many cities have created their own 
branch of March for Our Lives. They've all been reaching out to us. They've all been not reaching out to us and taking it into their own hands. It's amazing the universal support we've gotten. I mean, it's proof that this isn't red and blue. This isn't generation versus generation. This is the 97% of people who believe that we need to take steps here together.